Sorry, I don't mean to show my hand, my footage. So you're ducking already, Lori? Don't I'm duck ducking yet. ducking already. No, I had a footage. Well, as people start to join, uh, we'll start at about a minute after the hour. Um, so, uh, so you got a few minutes. So, welcome. I'll be right back. Absolutely. Welcome all our West Coasters, right? Most of them. So funny story. So our household got a another car. Long story. Um, the, it's a basic car, but it has self parking on it because it leverages some of the Toyota capabilities. You hit a button and it parks you. And I got to tell you, even as a technologist, I find it very unnerving. You just got to sit there. <laughs> And the wheel spins around and it backs in or goes forward in or parallel park. And it says, okay, I'm done. You can get out now. <laughs> it is the weirdest feeling. That's what I feel my age. <laughs> so anyway, that was my I, I still approach. struggle with some of the, the screens, the backup screens, right? I mean, it's just. It's well, I can't imagine backing up anymore without a screen, you know, with our big trucks and stuff. So, um, hey, so everyone that's kind of coming on, uh, we're going to start in about a minute or two. Um, so it's, thank you for your patience. Thank you for joining. Uh, this is our second one for the evening. We'd like to do two. We did one two, three hours ago uh, at four o'clock uh, Eastern. And so now... No, yeah, it was seven o'clock. It's seven o'clock Eastern. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. It's a big deal. <laughs> We're way past my bedtime at this point, right? <sighs> indeed. 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 So thank you, you two back there for staying up late. Yeah. <laughs> a silly Ohio people. It's 10 o'clock. Do you so, know where your children are? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, all mine are in bed, by the way. <laughs> all my all my critters are like I'm done. <laughs> okay, so we're we're gonna we're gonna start. Um, uh, just in the interest of your time, and I respect all your time. So first of all, my name is Eric McHenry. I've probably met most of you, and hopefully, we'll meet the rest at some point down the road. Uh, welcome. Um, let me. I'm international president. My wife Laverne and I. We live in uh, Santa Rosa, California, North Bay, north of San Francisco. Uh, and our home club is the Greater Bay Area Airstream Club, um, out of Region 12. And to my left or right, Lori Tilton. Hi. By the way, your name's, oh, oh there it goes. It says Lori Tilton it. now. Excellent. Yes, I got it. I got it. Lori so. is in Jackson Center, Ohio, our executive director. Yep. Welcome. Good evening. Sorry, this is like, woo. <laughs> to and we have special Special presenter to one of my great friends, Jenny Schnettler, Executive Council member. Say hi, introduce yourself if you could, Jenny. Hi, I'm Jenny Schnettler, and I've been basically living here in Jackson Center for the last six months in a trailer down by the river and um, having a great time working very, very hard on renovating your new headquarters building. You know, one of the fun things about our club is that, you know, we bump into each other and each other being club members like all over the U.S., you know, I was just with you two just about a month and a half ago, you know, in Missouri, right? You know, it's just really yeah. interesting how we bump around now, we meet each other. So that's one of the cool things about our club. Okay, so campfire chats, um, just a little background. I know many of you have been to them before. Uh, Lori and I started them about three years ago in uh, Maine, uh, Freiburg, Maine at the International Rally. And what we what we had heard was that we heard, well, the executive committee, the executive council, they never really hear from normal members. They don't, they're kind of out of touch. We don't really know how to ask questions. Um, we don't know what's going on in the club. We don't know about our benefits. We have some ideas. And so Lori and I decided to start these and we've done a whole bunch of them now. They're done once a quarter. Um, from my standpoint, I started uh, my professional career in Hewlett Packard in Silicon Valley. And back in those days, uh, we had what's called uh, coffee talks which were very similar. 
Um, and the goal of these is a little bit for us to share with you what's happening in our club. But Lori and I view it more that we get to hear from you about questions you have, concerns you have, ideas you have. You know, for example, as we go into the benefits that our club offers to our members, it was about a, a couple of years ago where two members said, hey, Eric, I got a great idea about doing something more with Harvest Host that ultimately turned into the courtesy parking program. And so there's been a lot of other wonderful ideas. So when it comes time, share your ideas. There's a Q&A button that you can share your ideas with. Um, we try to answer everyone either live or after the fact. Um, we will answer any question we can. There's very, very few things that are confidential at our club. And uh, if we don't know, we'll get back to you. Um, if we can't tell you anything about it, we'll tell you about that. But we can answer probably 99.9% .9 of the questions that you guys have. Uh, and we so encourage that. I mean, that's why we're here, right? I mean, we have some stuff we'll share, but we don't know if you want to hear that. So whatever questions you have, uh, please ask. Oops, Lori, I forgot to check. Can you flip on uh, sharing, please? Oh. Thanks. I I Thanks. So we, we, we do have a, a bit of a, um, a, a PowerPoint and, and we're, we're not going to spend a lot of time on this, but this helps uh, us kind of walk through initially. And this is kind of what we'll talk about. Um, ooh. Ooh. You can still see it. Yeah. Yeah. I can okay, see great. it. Great. Great. Yeah. Okay, and so uh, Lori's going to talk a little bit about the membership status, and I call that the health of the club. You know, that's a lot of questions that our members have, like, how are we doing? You know, we've heard about other RV clubs, which are having some challenges. How are we doing as a club? Uh, what benefits do we have? Discount programs do we have for our members? And then we've got Ginny here to talk a little bit about our 707 East Pike hypo uh, in Jackson Center. This is a building we acquired about a year and a bit ago. Um, headquarters is ready to move into it. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the existing building we've had for over 30 years, which is 803 East Pike. And the board approved uh, moving it into a membership clubhouse, uh, offering courtesy parking. And also the thing that excites me a lot is actually building out a new uh, historical center. So we'll talk about that. And then we've had a lot of questions about Harvest Host and courtesy parking. So we'll talk a little bit about that and then just general Q&A. Okay, so, okay, did that show membership slide up? Not yet. I... Okay, yeah, hang on a second. Something was acting strange. I something about uh, sharing had paused. Okay, so it should be up now, right? There we go. Okay, Lori, on to you. All right. Well, again, good evening, everybody. So, you know, part of our role at HQ is just to process memberships and make sure we can get people um, involved in the club and, and take care of them as needed. So you can see as of this morning, we had 9,948 memberships. Um, so we're super excited about that because we're are pretty confident we're going to reach 10,000 this year. But um, we're at a 25-year high. Last time we were even in the 9,700 uh, memberships was 1999. So I feel like um, some of our... our uh, Things we've been doing over the last couple of years, trying to just more member engagement, more rallies, more interest, uh, and connecting the community has really been paying off um, over the years. So um, that's a huge deal for us. And then our join rate, and I don't think people realize how many folks we have join. Um, we have another slide. There we go. Um, so you can see this graph of what's transpired since 2019 um, on our joins. And we've been pretty consistent. Um, as you see through 23, we were pretty consistent all the year. And then 24, we're, we're again um, being consistent and more members coming in. So it's exciting for us. Um, some folks, it's we can turn them around in a day. And others, it may take a little bit longer because they're interested in a certain big red number. Um, so we spend a lot of time on that and people, some people don't, uh, I don't say necessarily understand, but don't get it. Um, but numbers are important to people and we're willing to take that time to make sure we can get things started um, off for them in the club. Um, so they have the right set of numbers that they want. If not, if we can't get there, then at least um, we can do more um, for that. 
So that's where we are on membership. Um, so Lori, in our last one, someone asked you the question of what is our retention rate and, and why is it what it is? Can you just yeah. share that? Yeah, so our retention rate is about 85% a year, which for clubs is fantastic. And what we're seeing, we always do an exit surveys and, and, and our people just call us and let us know what's going on. Uh, but the majority, I'd say 10% of that 15% is because they're aging out um, of traveling and or they sold their Airstream, life changes, uh, things of that nature. So I personally, real, I know I'm a little biased, but I really feel good about our our community, our club, because we're not running people off. They can find their tribe. They can do the different things we have available. Um, everybody can find an interest. So I feel like that makes us stand out a little bit more than other clubs. Um, we're aware of, you know, other clubs are struggling. Um, just recent news came out about Family Motor Coach. Um, one of their biggest interclubs, which is their diesel pushers, is is folding. Um, so that would almost sound like, in our world, that'd be like the VAC folding, right? It, it, it'd be a huge impact because, of course, Family Motor Coach being primarily Class A's, that's a big deal. Uh, but anyway, so... Uh, for us, it's it's fantastic. Um, I think that we've built such a community that once people, it's like Hotel California, once you check in, you never want to check out, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we were in Sedalia last month and I'm going to go back a slide. And uh, it, someone reminded me that the last time our club was in Sedalia was in 20, was it 2013? 2012. 2012, 2012, 2013. Yep. And I think we only we had less, well, the numbers are close to 400, but we probably had less than that rig. So we had 400, 500 Airstreams in Sedalia in 2012, 2013. And we just left there with, you know, over 1,200. And that you can see it in this chart also. And so what I find truly amazing is that in an era where a lot of social clubs are starting to roll off losing interest, losing membership. There is something about our club and Airstreams themselves, which causes this dramatic uptick. And uh, I think it's complicated. I think though that there is no doubt that some of the changes we've made in our club over the last six, eight, 10 years have really helped us start to grow again. You know, uh, we are the, now I think we can, we, all y'all can patch us up on your back. We are the envy of some of the peer clubs. Lori and I speak to the directors of the other major clubs and a lot of them are asking, hey, what are you guys doing right? And it's a complicated question, right? You know, because we have the benefit of having a strong uh, brand in Airstream, the trailers, the motorhomes, um, but our club is doing really strong as well too. So keep up the good work. And I say the action item I have for those of you listening is that what, what keeps people members for a long period of time is how much they enjoy their experience of doing events with us. So if you're a new person or you see a new person coming into a rally, engage them, talk with them, make them feel welcome. You know, that is what, that's what really helps. Cause once people start to feel like this is a cool place for them, they meet other interesting people with similar likes, knowledgeable people. They're like, Oh, this is really cool. I'm going to stay around. I'm going to keep doing things with these people. I like the way this group feels. And so that is because of the members, because of all of you. So keep up the Absolutely. good work. But it's really um, quite amazing. We look at this chart, um, the turnaround our club did um, a number of years ago. Yeah. And to, Eric, you're you're exactly right that it's a, it's not HQ. All we, well, we do is process, but it's, it's our members, sir. It's our members that are, that are making the difference. And if any of y'all have been to an, another brand's rally um, or another RV club's rally, you'll see the difference in the atmosphere. You don't see all the happy hours. You don't see all the people gathering together at, at their trailers. It, it's much different. And um, that's one of the things I noticed when I visited another um, RV group. So you guys are awesome. Yeah, Yay. keep up the good work. It's great. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so... Lori, maybe just, uh, but discounts and, and benefits, you know, that some people say, well, what's the value of being in the club? And I have a hard time with that question because I don't believe for most people it's a cash value. It's something else, but we have some phenomenal benefits. We and Lori, do. Maybe go over these again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we, you know, we started this process four years ago, maybe. 
Mm -hmm. um, actually, Richard Short from um, one of our region presidents back then, uh, Region 2, he was passionate about this. And so we started this with him and then uh, got it brought it into HQ. Um, but it is, it's to find exclusive discounts it, or programs or, or accessibility to, to things that others can't see. So we've been working on this list. Um, of course, the tires are a big deal. Um, people love the solar stoves that where you can have our the ACI logo engraved. Um, Airstream Supply, you get 10% off of what they call the Airstream Love Collection. So you can, all these things, go to the website. You'll see our members and discounts. And then a lot of these have either codes or a special link like Griot's Garage. You just have to follow the link from our site and you get a you get a discount there as well. So, and as Eric mentioned, and we'll talk more about Harvest Host in a little bit, but again, that's a huge deal of people once they learn it's there and part of us and you get exclusive uh, things, it's it's a great benefit for everybody. Yeah, and for those of you long-term international rally attendees, this is the first year that uh, Airstream Supply Com Company um, came to an Astro Rally as an exhibitor. And again, they're the ones that make all the expensive, uh, really neat gear. Not the service folks who have come in parts who've come before, but they were there too. But this is the first time all the gear was there. And oh my gosh, they were just swamped um, with our members buying stuff. So it's a really cool thing to start seeing more, more vendors, more exhibitors, more blah, blah, blah. Okay. Anything else you want to talk about on discounts and benefits, Lori? No. Um, again, it's something that we're always looking to do and add. So if you do have an idea or you know of a company or something of that, uh, please send that information to HQ and we'll definitely follow up on it. But it is it is something that uh, we feel is super important to keep, um, you know, keep these uh, folks trying to do more for us. So that's our goal, right? So you can, again, enjoy your membership get some perks here and there. Um, that's super important. Cool. Okay, so before we do this, I'm just gonna pause and take some questions. So um, Johnny, hey Johnny, uh, ask a question about, is there, what are the plans to improve navigation of the club's website? Uh, we So we did a fairly, well, a moderate refresh of the top level menu. And I say that because most people start at the top level menu and go down. We restructured that about a year ago. At this point, um, there are, are not any plans other than a couple of small things. We're changing some of the layout of some of the pages that should go live in less than a month, but no big changes to the club website. Um, the next question though, John, hey John, uh, the California person, Nevada person, Region 12, ask about an app. Yes, yeah, so one of our executive council members, um, Kindle, um, has been researching an app and uh, he's, uh, reached out to some developers, he's presented it to the board, and uh, we may move forward with that, uh, depending on the progress. But the app would bring forward some of the uh, more common things our members want to do. And Johnny, this kind of addresses your question kind of, you know, as a different way. So we know for a fact that when people are away from their desktops, when they're traveling, they want to find out, hey, where's an event? How do I sign up for it? Um, they want to find out about courtesy parking. They want to look up big red numbers or look up contact information. That's mainly the top things that people want to do when they're traveling. So we hope to bring some of those things into uh, an app. And so that is under consideration. Uh, I think we're going to be able to budget for it this upcoming fiscal year. Um, we'll see how that goes. But yes, thank you on that. Okay, the next thing... Um, I won't even bring up the thing, uh, this slide. We're, I'm just so excited to have Jenny here. Uh, Jenny uh, was a, is the project manager for the two buildings in Jackson Center. And Jenny's gonna take you through um, a kind of a surprise tour of the new building. On to you, Jenny. Thank you, Eric. So the it's been the most exciting progress that we've seen here. But if you don't know any of the backstory, I'll quick, quickly fill you in. This building was came available and we really had outgrown the space across the parking lot here. These two buildings are adjacent to each other. We had really outgrown the space. We had really poor function in that building. And frankly, it was kind of, it is kind of embarrassing. Um, quick little story. When you first walked into that building before Lori got her design ideas to create it to look like it actually had something to do with Airstreams. It was decorated with ducks. 
So it never really did scream out that this was what our club was all about. One of the advantages now is that we were given a clean slate. We got to gut the building that we're in, which was three separate businesses. And I'm gonna start taking you on a tour. We knocked down walls, we moved things. You're standing in the vestibule with me right now. This is creating a bit of a solarium. We have a wonderful entrance now before it had an ATM machine. You know, when you buy a building or a home, typically when the, the keys are delivered, you get everything left inside. So I was pretty excited that they left the ATM. Unfortunately, they came the next day and took it. So that didn't work out for me. So here we are now, we're in the front lobby. This used to be a dental office lobby and a banking lobby with a big wall and a hallway, all knocked down and redone. Here we go. This is a fun wallpaper I selected because we're a fun club. This is just a restroom, but I was able to get the exact same fabric to decorate the new leather furniture and make it a lot more fun. So what's really, really cool about this lobby room is see this little whiter area down here, this kind of a wainscoting area. Airstream Inc. has donated the aluminum and here it all is. And we have got riveted aluminum that's gonna line these walls. But in addition, they really are excited about our club and, and the fact that we're doing this by ourselves. Here is our front reception window. They're creating a new Airstream back end with lights that function so that we have a super cool looking space. When you walk in here, it just says, yeah, you're home. You know where you are. So let's go on back into the reception desk area. And this is when you make a phone call in. Jen Thomas is going to help you. She'll be sitting right here. This is her zone. She has lots more space and lots more organization. Along this wall, this used to be walled off. These were dental operatories. We knocked down walls, built halls, and opened things up. This big, long expanse of wall is 24 feet. David Gully, Joe Paplinski, and Samantha Martin are putting together a timeline for us of the history of our club. This little back hallway over here leads us to a staff bathroom. Lori wanted it not to look too industrial, so we made it a little bit prettier. Then in here, they have a kitchen. The impact of a kitchen is not to be understated. Right now, they eat in their car. Lori said, can you give us a kitchen? This used to be a dental lab walled off. We opened it up, created a beautiful kitchen for them, gave them a nice stove and oven so that once a week, they'll make cookies for when you stop by. <laughs> Coming over here, we're going to find the artistic area. This is where Corey Corey Maxwell, our Blue Beret, Blue Beret editor is. You can see the Formica there and you'll see it in a minute in the workroom because we built the tables. Over here will be our newest employee. This is Sherry McCabe's office. She's our new marketing manager, marketing director. She's got lots of great working space. It's nighttime here, but these are really bright, wonderful open windows so that they feel like they're connected to the outside. This is an overflow office. What's exciting is see this window right here? That didn't used to be there. Thanks to Gary Russo's insistence, we knocked four holes in the back wall and put four new windows in so everyone has windows. This is the room I'm the most proud of. This is their work room. We built these tables, created great space for when you get a new red, big red number. All that machinery will now be in here instead of right now it's sitting in Amanda's office. Tons of working space, copier, paper products. This whole area back here is for assembly of the new member packets and all that goes into that process. So you can see it's just very fun, clean, bright and colorful in here. I'm going out the other door of the workroom. Now we have a data room. This was created because Jeff Dalrymple, Jim Cock, and Dan Dice worked tirelessly creating all of this networking information. So we now have a dedicated data room with its own air system. This is Amber's office, Amber's member services. She has a great space, very exciting. This is another restroom. I call that the boys restroom because it's my kind of not too exciting restroom. This hallway that goes all the way down here, the whole reason this floor plan works, down there was walled off because 
Brad Keel, who was our construction guru, managed to knock right through there and create this opening that gave everything the best flow possible. This is Amanda's office. She's our office manager. And again, she has great space now. Coming into what I call the executive, it's like Tomorrowland at Disney World. This big, <laughs> thick wall, you have to appreciate this, had to get knocked through. You know, this is the width of this wall. It's massive. They had to knock through there to get into here because this was the bank. This bank area now becomes our executive suite. This is a small kitchenette for when we have business meetings and conferences or even just a, a vendor or a supplier comes by. We can have a nice snack for them. This is a, a little private powder room. And over here are some nice comfortable benches so that they have the opportunity for privacy during a meeting, come take a call, just step away for a minute. And that leads us over to the conference room. We've never had a conference room before, and now we got a big one. This is the conference room. It's absolutely huge. This is a table that seats 22, 24 if we're gonna be close friends. Over here on this back wall is a 97 inch smart TV. So when we have meetings, we can have video conferencing or show of slides or interactive uh, video display. This is a beautiful eight foot glass whiteboard. Here we were messing around a little bit cause you gotta have fun. So we took one of the magnets and we created a wheel, kind of fun. <laughs> But this room was the teller and the bank lobby. We kept all the beautiful woodwork. It's absolutely stunning in here. The jobs that we jobbed out, the only things that we did not do ourselves were the floors. We had to have the concrete leveled and we had the carpeting installed. That we wanted the warranty of the car carpeting installed so we decided, made that decision that we would not put it in ourselves. Now you are in the rally room. And you might say, why do we need a rally room? Well, stop on over to the old building and you'll find out the answer to that question. It is floor to ceiling tubs with all the cool stuff that they bring for us and they have nowhere to assemble it, organize it, or even catalog it. Now they have all the space that they need, cabinetry, work surfaces. Yes, this was the drive up window. Yes, it worked when we took a possession of the building. And yes, that little panic button we didn't realize it was actually hooked up to the sheriff. Guess what happened? <laughs> Back in here, this is a rally storage closet. It's really, really effective because it's got these massive giant drawers, absolutely huge. And then all this side area for stacking those totes. But guess what they left behind? The vault. Millie painted that, Millie O'Donnell. But it is still a working vault. A lot of fun. Not the most glamorous vault I've ever seen, but you know what? It works. And the one last room I haven't shown you yet, come with me. This is Lori's office, our executive director, who finally has a little breathing room. This is her space in here. And when she's sitting at her desk, she gets to look at that beautiful painting that was done in Sedalia. The, mar the tape marks on the wall are for where her monitor goes. And this creates for Lori some room to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting, a small group meeting with the team, um, a member stopping by wanting a private meeting. She really now has some dedicated space to conduct the business of running our business. So here you are. We're going to run right back into that front lobby and we're going to be all done with our tour. One thing I want you to understand, which was I did not understand when I began this process, is the relationship that we have right now with Airstream Inc. Why are they so excited and so generous with us? Well, for years, we didn't have a great relationship with them. We were just sort of, you know, un uncomfortable siblings. But now, through honestly, through the efforts, <laughs> not exaggerating, the efforts of Lori and Eric, they have fostered a really, really dynamic relationship of affection and respect and excitement between the two organizations where for Bob Wheeler actually said, we make the product, but you've created the lifestyle. And for once that respect and that, that excitement and interaction between the two organizations 
has flourished. And the timing is perfect for me because I was able to have them help us. And it makes me look like I know what I'm doing. I don't. <laughs> I don't know at all. But at any rate, I think it's going to be an amazing place. And when you come to your new clubhouse, you're going to feel really welcomed. Thank you. Thanks, yeah, I just, I just want to point out, you guys, how all this amazing work Jenny's done and how creative and resourceful she is. So like it, when you guys saw that rally room, all those are recycled cabinets from the bank. I mean, they were there um, or in somewhere else in that building. So it's just amazing. Um, I'm so appreciative of Jenny and everything she's done and everybody that has come to help her um, make that space. So yay! So Thank we're moving you. next week. Well, <laughs> I'm super thankful to my husband. Imagine. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh my John. God. I know. <laughs> John is. <laughs> he gets Thank double you guys. stars. He's done yeah. amazing to, to help. This and, and I have to point out, if you've ever been to our old building, this new building is only 25% larger, the space. But it feels like night and day just because of the layout. And uh, that that layout would not have been possible had we contracted it out. It would have been far too expensive. And to have our members do all the busting down the walls and the wiring uh, and countless hours in there, um, it made this possible. So um, it really says a lot about our club. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Cool stuff. Okay, um, we have a couple of questions. Yeah, so a, a couple of thanks. Um, yeah, Jenny and the team. It's You know, it's, it's the team. Jenny has been fantastic. We've had a whole bunch of other people that have lived close oh, yeah that have it's been a lot of other out. people that we really really want to thank they've, they've been amazing so we'll find our we'll find an opportunity to thank them and uh johnny wants to know if uh if there's a microwave coming because she's offering to to get one for the for the <laughs> so i'm sure laurie will follow up on that thank you johnny oh my goodness that's so sweet and and, and by the way um again the, the generosity of our members is just unbelievable so thank you I'm loving the ham the ham radio space. Yeah, Jim is asking about the ham too. station. I don't we're gonna, know. We're going to put some antennas on the roof. Laura, you'll never notice. <laughs> don't worry about no. it. Don't look up. Don't look up. <laughs> don't look up. Uh, <laughs> that's um, a great idea, actually. I'll talk to Mr. Uh, Cock about that. <laughs> yeah. We just got, no, let's, moving on. Um, so uh, let's see here. Johnny, again, jo uh, Jenny, I know you can't see the comments. I'll share these with you. But um, Johnny's saying, great space. You've done an amazing job. Uh, Lord G is saying this is so exciting. And then Kathleen Hibbert is asking what is going to happen to the old building. And that perfect is a perfect timing. question. Perfect question. You know, we have quite an opportunity now because we have another building. And Eric's going to show you a few slides of uh, some designs we've got, come up with to, to maximize the use of that building. Yep. Okay. So um, this is this. This slide pack, this slide was done probably a year and a half ago, and I'm really happy that we've stuck in general to this plan. So this first priority for the board, exec council, and the project team was to get headquarters moved in, and that's happening. So good job on that. Check that off. The next two things are our historical center and member clubhouse. So we want to take the old building and turn it into a historical center and member clubhouse. I'll go into more detail about it, but essentially, um, we want to be able to highlight and share uh, our, our club's history. Um, we want to have a clubhouse for people to be able to work and lounge, uh, do their, take a shower, do their laundry within the area. We're going to be provisioning 12 overnight parking spots. There's already three up and running now. There needs to be some interior configuration. We're administering the parking through courtesy parking. I'll show you an example of that. Um, the funding for it will come from a capital campaign, so not uh, member dues, uh, capital campaign for the membership side, and also a, a charitable contribution campaign, uh, tax tax deductible for the um, historical center. Later, we still want to look at an RV park. So we did a feasibility study probably about six or nine months ago. It was really good. The feasibility study said, yep, you're all on the right track, um, but develop it in phases. And so what I'm going to show you are the plan for developing it in phases. And then after a couple of years, we'll see what demand we have for those 12 spots. And we'll see if we want to expand out a little bit uh, more. So I apologize for the crappy drawing. It was late last night I was drawing this. But to orient you, on the right-hand side of this diagram is the old building, 803 East Pike. And on the left-hand side, uh, 
you know, or oriented vertically is a new building 707. And again, um, when this lot became available, if you've ever done real estate, uh, you know, if, if the adjacent lot becomes available, you want to take a really good hard look at buying it if you can, if you have a need for it. And so Lori came to me one day and says, oh, there's a for sale site on. <laughs> and that started the process. So we were able to make that happen. And so as you can see in this diagram, we'll start on the right-hand side. Um, there ultimately will be uh, six 30-amp sites on the back side of the old building. And there will be six 30-amp sites in the median in between um, the two buildings. Uh, we had about mid 40 airstreams out there in the summer. The Vintage Airstream Club had a huge rally out there. Jenny and Don were there, Laverne and I were out there. It was called Helen's Homecoming Rally. And we had about 40 airstreams in that space between the uh, old building and the new building. It was really cool. So we kind of proved out that, yeah, this, this site, this campus can hold a lot of airstreams if we need to. We also plan in this first phase, in addition to putting in you know, the nine additional sites to put in a dog park and to put in some sort of a shade structure on the grass. At this point, we're not planning on disturbing the um, probably six acres of uh, field that are south from here. Um, at some point we may, uh, it can be used for boondocking if a large group comes through. Uh, as I mentioned before, there's existing sewer and water um, already um, on the old property. So there's uh, enough for, for people to be able to stay for three or four days or five days and you know manage their, that pretty well. So Lori, why don't you talk about what we've just turned on um, to allow people to be able to stay behind the old building? All right, so through the um, Harvest Host app, our courtesy parking, powered by Harvest Host, you can now see um, HQ. And we currently have three sites that can be powered. We got 30 amp, we have water that can be daisy chained. And then um, as Eric mentioned, you'll see the one picture there. We do have a, a dump, dump station. So when you leave, you can dump your tanks. Um, so now you can go online, you can book your site. Right now it's kind of been a wonky way of doing it. If you knew about it, some people called the office and, and we'd see if we have time there. So, uh, or spaces there. So these spaces surprisingly are the three we have. And then people will just come boondock quite a bit as people are coming through, they'll come to Jackson center to have service done, or they'll come in a couple days early. Cause they want to go to the factory, do a tour, go through Airstreams heritage center. So, or just take a break. So I'm excited about this. I really feel as we get the more sites online, they'll be utilized more. And as uh, they were talking about, you know, expanding this footprint and allowing our members to have a, a space to, to take care of their stuff. Um, you know, my big dream is eventually as we develop more, even possibly have some stationary units. So when people do have to take their rigs in for service, that they can come and stay in the stationary unit bring their groceries, bring their pets or whatever it is so that um, you're not so displaced during the day. If anybody's had service done, you'll, you know, at, at Jackson Center, you understand what I'm saying. So that's live now on Harvest Host. And we'll, I think we're going to talk about more Harvest Host here in a little bit. Thanks, Lori. And yeah, and I apologize. Uh, Terry asked me the question, oh, what state are we talking about? I apologize. We're just so used to saying Jackson Center. So yeah, Ohio. And uh, it, I, really say, if you ever have a chance to go back to, we kind of call it the mothership, um, the the fact, the new factory, which is probably four years old, three, four years old, maybe a little bit longer than that. And the new, they have a new historical or heritage center there about the history of Airstreams. It's really a cool place. The factory tour is just amazing, both on the towables and the, um, and the coaches as well. It's pretty amazing. And of course, some people choose to go back to Jackson Heritage Center to have some more significant repairs done or upgrades done to their airstreams because the people that work on are the people that built it. So it's kind of a good thing too. All right. Um, so, so this is the part that uh, a little bit more of a diagram of um, 803 East Pike and how we're looking at dividing it between uh, the member clubhouse on the left and the historical center on the right. And so on the left side, uh, as you walk in the door from the bottom, uh, vestibule, and then uh, Jenny had a really great idea is that, you know, instead of having a, of a, of a man in 
a male and female bathroom, let's have three unisex ones that have a, each one has a shower, a sink, um, and a bathroom in it. And that way people can shower. As we know, showering in our airstreams is certainly fine, but sometimes it's nice to just turn on a whole bunch of water and shower in a big shower, particularly if you've been on the road for weeks on end. The other thing that if you've traveled for weeks on end, you know you want to do laundry. And I got to tell you from, you know, doing laundry, my wife and me in Jackson Center, it's, you know, it's be nice to have a clubhouse do one's laundry in. And also to relax, like when you're sitting there waiting for your trailer to get worked on, or you just on a tour, you're back from playing around, to have a nice, fun clubhouse, you can just relax and do some work, strong Wi-Fi, um, all that stuff. So we're planning to provide that on the left side. On the right-hand side is a part, again, I'm really excited about, and that's a historical center. And the idea of this came from sort of similar to what Airstream, uh, the corporation did. They built a heritage center, and the heritage center is amazing, it, it really highlights the 100 years of Airstream trailers, mainly trailers being manufactured over the years. It doesn't talk a lot about our club. And so this is a talk about our club. Again, our club is turning 70 years old next year, 7-0. And we have a ton of history about our caravans, about our events, just about every place we were around the, the, the world. And we want to be able to highlight some of that stuff and preserve some of that stuff. And so... That's what this is going to be for. Um, we're forming a 501c3 um, charitable nonprofit to, to run this side. So any donations into the historical center are um, can be benefit from a, a, a tax, a tax um, taxable benefit side. We're going to have to raise funds for this. And so over the next few months, we're going to come up with a project budget. And we'll come up with a, some fundraising goals, both on the member side, which is not charitable contributions, and then on the historical side, which will be charitable. Um, I really just want to thank already um, some people from the historical uh, standing committee, uh, Joe Poplinski, David Gully, Marta, some other people that have really been working hard to start to build up our inventory and preserve our inventory historical items. You know, for example, they'll be sharing at the IBT meeting in December how they've got finally got going a scanning project and they're digitizing all of our membership directories historically from 70 years ago um, up to today. They're digitizing all of our um, Blue Berets and also all of all our cat caravan handbooks. That way they'll be available for true viewing later and true archiving later. By the way, and these things are in boxes now. Um, one of the things that Jenny touched on, the fact that in the current building, a lot of that crap is just in boxes in the back and shelving. Um, it's not in a good place to preserve it. Um, so um, we hope to, to focus this on that. Can I make a quick comment here? This, this is just a draft <coughs> statement of purpose. I won't read it through it for you. But again, the difference between what we're looking at for a historical center versus the Airstream Heritage Center is that Airstream is focused on the metal Airstream. Um, we're focused on our, our club. Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now let's go to courtesy parking. Um, we launched this program. Actually, Lord, why don't you take this one? I'm coughing for a second. Excuse me. Go ahead. <laughs> Getting all choked up over Harvest Host. I know it's well, been a I, great. I think it was the whiskey. It's a great <laughs> okay, project, no, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Okay. Okay. So two years ago at our, uh, we had IBT strategy session in Jackson Center. It was our first one we've ever had. And the IBT realized that one of the uh, most interesting benefits that was the most underutilized um, was courtesy parking. Uh, it had been around for years. It was hardly used. Um, a lot of members were participating in it, but they never got guests coming to their house. And the answer was, it was just too hard to navigate. It was just too cumbersome. And so based on a suggestion by a couple of members, so thank you for those two members, we reached out to Harvest Host and said, hey, we, you know, we'd like to take a, something do a little bit different with y'all and it took about a year to, to get it to get going. Uh, Kathy Giese was a project manager for it. Thank you, Kathy. Um, but it's running well now. So if you were to go on to courtesy parking right now, Harvest Host, you'd see this. Mind you, every club member um, has been given access to a free account. So a free account on Harvest Host. That free account only shows our courtesy parking data if you want to see their paid data layers, you can buy those also. But every club member has the ability to have the free data. <clears throat> so 
So I took a look uh, just the other day, and this is the status of a couple of days ago. Um, right now, we have 336 uh, of our members offering, offering courtesy parking across the U.S. and Canada. Um, I was surprised that 253 of them offer electrical, which is fantastic. One of the things that uh, I know that Laverne and I, as we travel across the country, if it's hot and humid, we're reluctant to stay at a harvest house without electricity because sure we can run our air conditioner for two hours off of our batteries, but it's not the same as having hookups. And I'm just really happy to see that uh, so many of our club members who are offering, offering courtesy parking are awful, also offer electrical. Um, some offer water, uh, a fair number offer extra nights. I mean, typically the expectation is one night, um, but you know, almost half offer extra nights. Uh, a lot of them offer same day booking, which is incredible because that means if you're driving along and you're like, eh, I, I don't really want to stay at a Walmart. I'm going to check out this harvest, this courtesy parking. You know, a hundred of them, you can book the same day. And if they're around, uh, then you can stay at their place. <clears throat> All of them have booking calendars. And this, by the way, was one of the huge issues that our prior um, courtesy parking solution did not have because you were never sure if when you called the person, if they were really going to be home or not, or if they had spaces, it kind of felt like a bit of an intrusion. Now you just look on the booking calendar and you can see if they have a spot available. You can see if it'll fit your 30 foot Airstream or your 35 foot or your 15 foot. And if it has electrical or not, they just send in a request to stay. So it's a pretty good program. Um, and the app is running now. Uh, it's uh, gonna be nice. And as you saw, Lori has uh, put up the headquarters on the courtesy parking app um, also. So not that many questions, any questions for you guys? We don't, like, we kind of went through all of our our main stuff. Uh, while yeah, you think about questions, I'll share something else kind of fun. So uh, this year, well, 2025 will be the 70th, 70, 70th anniversary of our club. And we're trying to figure out what we do to celebrate the 70th anniversary of our club. But 2031 will be the 100th anniversary of Airstream trailers being manufactured. <clears throat> and so we partnered uh, with Airstream, with some senior people in Airstream. And we had an initial kickoff meeting a couple of weeks ago to talk about what we as in collaboration could do between the manufacturer Airstream and our club to celebrate that 100th year anniversary. And, you know, we're known for our caravans, our club is. And so we quickly decided that we'd love to do a caravan, um, if possible, in 2031, that probably starts on the West Coast, because that's where Airstreams were initially um, made in, in Southern California, maybe going up to Oregon, where Wally's uh, birthplace um, was, is, and then maybe head, head east maybe stop at some key past international rally locations, some key locations, um, and end up in the Jackson Center area with a party. So we're starting the initial planning of it. It's seven years from now, <laughs> um, but I'm really excited that uh, we're planning something uh, with Airstream for to celebrate the 100th anniversary of, of Airstream. Okay. Hey, so, Eric, um, if, if you don't mind, I'd like to talk about um, international rally just a little bit. Yep. So um, for for those of you, I know you're out, some of you are out west, but uh, we just recently launched our registration for our 2025 International Rally, which is going to be in New York, Pennsylvania. And currently we have 630-ish uh, reservations already booked, so we're always super excited about that. Um, so then in 2026, our plans are to be in Minot, North Dakota. Uh, we will be there. That rally will be August 22nd to the 27th. And then in 2027, we will be back in Rock Springs, um, Wyoming. And that will be probably the last week of June. So we're excited that we've got those three solid booked out. Um, and then we'll we'll start our additional, um, you know, looking. So for those that are on the West, if you guys see a location that may possibly have, I don't know, 1,500 hookups for RVs, let me know. Um, we've been trying to find a place further west, but it's a struggle because um, there's just not facilities that that have, uh, have that available. So uh, keep an eye out. We'll definitely keep everybody um, updated. In Can Canada, too. We'd love to go back to Canada at some point. Yeah, we would. And, 
but it's I've, hard. It's hard. I've talked to a couple facilities, um, <clears throat> and and we just can't figure that out yet. But we're the team is constantly working on that. Um, I see we got a couple questions, and then um, whoever has your hand up, if you could write your question in the Q and A, that would be fantastic. Um. Uh. Let me do the second one first. So, so John Murphy, thank you, Stacy. Uh, yeah, how can we contribute? Um, thank you for asking that question. Uh, we once we have a firm schedule and a uh, rough cost estimate for the new developments at eight hundred three, um, we'll be sending out some ways for people to contribute either to the membership side, clubhouse side, which will not be eligible for a tax beneficial contribution, but also for the historical side which will be eligible for a charitable because it's educational related from the IRS standpoint. So um, a, a few months, I'd say. We don't want to ask until we know how much. Although I will say, Jenny, we've already raised how much? 7K, 8K? I don't remember what it was. Oh, I, it's it's even hard to say. <laughs> it's, it's really hard to say. People have just popped out of the woodwork and pledged and actually donated. And it's quite exciting. Um, yeah. One thing I do want to stress, and I, I love that we're talking about this right now, none of these projects are using any member dues at all. Yeah. And that's pretty, that's a big thing to be proud of. In 803, that was built in 1984-85, um, and that was built with a capital, a capital campaign at that time. So that's a 40-year-old project, but we haven't done one in 40 years. And everyone's chomping at the bit to help leave their legacy. I think it's great. Yeah. And, you know, remember, so the property at 803 is 10 acres and it was donated. That property was donated to the club um, plus another parcel, which is across the street um, that was given then to the village and where the village has their community park and their community pool. So that was all member driven contribution. So, again, it's just amazing um, what our members do for this club. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so before we, I did we came, I'll come back to Donnie's in a second. Before we go, I just wanted to, um, uh, again, remind everyone that uh, it's really super important then when new members come to an event that we make them feel welcomed. I think all of us can probably remember the first time we went to an Airstream Club event or to a party or to a fundraiser. And you just sort of feel like, you know, you sort of like, it's them and no one's paying attention to them, to us, right? So so go out of your way and 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 meet people, greet people. Uh, I, Laverne and I just came back from, I think one of the best examples our club does in general are what we call buddy rallies or maintenance rallies or um, newbie rallies. And this was a newbie rally in Napa, California, where probably a quarter of the people, maybe a third were people that had only been in the club for a short period of time or had their airstream for a short period of time. Number of them, it was their first time ever coming to a club event. And uh, it was remarkable. Um, just the friendships that came out of that, those discussions and sort of what they learned, but we learned, right? And so do things like that to encourage new people to come and be feel, feel welcome. Um, it's a truly remarkable place, but, you know, Going to your first event is always, for most people, a little bit challenging. You're not sure sort of what to do or how to fit in or whatever. So, uh, like a first date, right? It's not, it's always nerve wracking. <laughs> it's the truth. I mean, but I know, Eric, you hit it on. It's, we're, I know it's so easy for us. Like when we get to a rally, we want to gravitate to those we know, catch up, right? On because we haven't seen somebody or something like that. But yeah, if, if we could all make a good effort of, Bringing in, bringing those newbies in and inviting them and making them feel included, uh, you know, make those circles a little bit be better. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, so, I guess that's about it for me. And Johnny had well, a question, a really good one about caravan. Do you want to take that? Yeah, one? yeah. I'll take that. So, Johnny, absolutely. We hear this all the time. Um, again, uh, reiterating how great our members are because that whole program is run from volunteers, right? From the caravan chair to all the caravan leaders. I can tell you that um, the long wait list is due to lack of caravan leaders, which of course are always trying to recruit. But I can also give you just a little bit of a tidbit, keep an eye out next week for an email 
um, because there are some caravans I know running in 25 that have some openings from cancellations. So we'll be um, sending that information out. So maybe um, possibly if you haven't been on one of those. So um, I know that's a program that everybody and every caravan leader and the caravan chairs want to expand. So um, I think we'll just continue to work on that because I know that is a great value to our club. Yeah, I suppose I should touch on the other part of the health of our club, which is the fiscal side. So we, we've we done a great job, I will say, over the last year or so to really make our financials transparent to, to those who you know want to look at them. And so you can go back for, I don't know how many years now and look at the financials, but certainly for the last year and a half, um, there's profit and loss uh, statements come right out of QuickBooks posted on the website. Uh, if you go to airshoeclub.org slash IBT, um, and everyone, there is a the P and L versus uh, budget versus uh, last year, you know, blah blah blah. You know, there's uh, cash flow statements, there's uh, balance sheets. Uh, it's really, really a good job. The thing I'm actually most excited about this year, though, is that uh, the finance committee, led by our finance director Alan Rabb and his really strong team, now they brought a proposal to the board of having some very specific reserves, a reserve policy. And I've been asking for this for a couple of years now. Um, it's kind of common in most businesses and in government where you put a reserve policy in place and you say, look, we must fund this reserve at a certain amount um, by our policies. So we established three reserve funds, one for operational reserves, kind of emergencies, um, one for infrastructure and one for software, right? Because for example, um, if you know that our website costs, pick a number to develop, you know it's going to cost at least that three years, five years from now to do it again. So let's put a fifth or third of that away every year. That way we have the funds to do it. And so we've got this reserve policies in place. Um, we're pushing any excess money we can into those reserves or paying down our mortgage for the new building. So we've got some really, really good financial folks now that are helping us steer our club. Um, and, you know, people tell me, hey, Eric, we're a camping club. It's like, yeah, well, sure. But we have, you know, 20,000 members and we have a uh, net income of, so we have an income of probably just north of $3 million a year. So it's not huge, but $3 million a year of revenue is not small either. And so we're starting to treat it more like a business. Um, but at the same time, you know, 95% of this campfire chat was on the member facing fund side. But there's a lot of work. On the board side, I'm really, really pleased with the board of directors, for any of you who are out there, or any of you who are interested in serving on the board of directors, either on your region or your local club or international, do it. Um, it's a great team now. Um, and I think Jenny's uh, been a key part of the executive council. And uh, we've made a ton of progress this last couple of years because we are functioning well as a good team and making some really good decisions. We don't always get it perfect the right, perfect the first time but we have a good team and we can correct if we have to. For example, I will share that uh, this upcoming year, we're going to, Lori's going to cringe a little bit, but we've committed to doing what we call a, 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 a glove box version of the membership directory. I am so to... last year, I will be the first to say that our decision was suboptimal around having a huge printed directory. What I think a lot of our members wanted, and we're going to try it this year, is what we call the glove box version, probably about this big. <laughs> You know, um, kind of like a spiral bound thing like this, but maybe a little bit smaller. And all it has in it, um, because it's in your glove box, it has the big red number, it has a person's name, their state, their local club, and the contact information. When you're going down the road, that's what you want, right? We want to make those available for our members to get in paper form if they want to. So that's something we're going to try again starting in January, February, this upcoming year too. So any ideas you all have, um, let us know. <laughs> And Lori's smiling, but the cool thing about the volunteer part is that um, one of our um, really cool uh, people in our club, uh, David Gully out of Region 6, uh, he donated um, a copier, a huge copier, uh, printer copier to headquarters. That thing has the ability to do print on demand of these membership directories now. So now we can actually do it in-house, thanks to, again to generosity of members. So this whole his thing- His name's Toby, by the way. We named him Toby. That's his name. So. Anthropomorphized, yes, exactly, yes. yes. Well, because Toshiba, 
It's yeah, from Toshiba. Toshiba. Yeah. I give. They, yeah. They've named all their machinery. We name all the machines. We have to because we're <laughs> we're so close and we're we work with them all day long. So we they gotta become call them team members. <laughs> they are team members, right? So my, my 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 point is that we're you know if you have any ideas, let us know. Again, we rely on your generosity for the donations. We have a lot of extremely, extremely skilled people in our club from yeah. all kinds of backgrounds, from constructions to legal to finance to engineering to design to blah blah blah. So, um, thank you, everyone. Uh, it's a it's been a cool a cool organization to be a part of. All righty, so we got about two minutes left. Any final comments, Janie? How about you? I want to thank the members for trusting that I will take this this project to the finish line for them. I, I feel so honored that you put your trust in me and I, I wanna, from my heart, say thank you. It's been wonderful. Thank you. Lori, last comments? I don't think so. Again, just wanna thank all our members for being great members. And if there's anything uh, the team at HQ can do for you, just let us know. We're there to help. That's, that's yeah, our goal. So Go out there, rally, take your airstreams out. As Wally Byam says, you know, they're not designed to be um, sitting in the garage. They're designed That's to be right. rolling on the road. So as weather permits, get them out there. So, all right, everyone, have a great rest of the evening. Um, thank you all, and we'll see you down the road. Good night. Good night. Take care.